video, I'm going to be solving an energy problem using energy bar graphs or an LOL diagram. So the first thing we're going to do is address the concepts with energy bar graphs, which will lead us into our formulas and finally solving for a final height. So our scenario is going to be a cart that's compressed against a spring that gets pushed off, goes around a loop in our final position as at the top of this loop right over here. So we want to ask ourselves a series of simple questions to see if there's kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and elastic energy. So before we do that, we want to first define our system. I'm going to for sure place my cart in the system, the track that it's riding on, the earth, because the earth provides the gravitational potential energy, and also the spring. For me, I like to include everything into the system. So all of our total energy at position A or our initial position is gonna be the same as all of the energy in total for position B or our final position. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer a few simple questions. Is the cart moving at position A? The answer is no, so there is no kinetic energy. Does it have any height off the ground? Doesn't look like it. It looks like it's about at baseline level. So we'll say no for that also. And for elastic energy, is something stretched or compressed? It looks like a spring is compressed in this case. So I'm going to give all of the energy to elastic potential energy. So we currently have um, a full bar of elastic potential energy in the end. We're going to answer those same series of questions. Does it have um, motion? Is it moving? It looks like based on these little lines, um, the answer is for sure going to be yes. It's going to have some kinetic energy. And does it have some height off the ground? It definitely has some height off the ground. Is anything structure compressed? The answer is not anymore. And is there any thermal energy? So is there any friction or collision happening that creates thermal energy? We'll say this is a frictionless case, so we'll say no thermal energy. So we need to decide how we're going to distribute that energy between the kinetic and the gravitational potential. Um, it doesn't really matter very specifically how many bars of energy you have. We'll say that it's about three bars, one, two, three of gravitational potential, and then two for kinetic to equal the original five of elastic energy that we had in the beginning. So we're saying that elastic potential energy equals the sum of the kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy at the end. Now, from there, you don't necessarily have to go through all these steps. It depends on what the question is asking for. So if the question is asking for bar graphs, then obviously fill out the bar graphs, then lead into the formulas and calculations. If you're just solving a problem that is just simply calculating a number, you're basically going through these steps in your head, but you might not necessarily be drawing out the actual system and bars of energy. But you still want to set these up so you know what types of energy are present in the beginning and end. So now we have two different, um, excuse me, three different formulas. We have one half kx squared for elastic potential energy. We have one half mv squared for the kinetic energy. And then we have MGH for the gravitational potential energy. So go, let's go ahead and see what we have here. Um, we have the spring constant of 200. So it's 200 newtons per meter for this particular spring that's compressed in the beginning. And X is the amount that it's stretched or compressed, which looks like it's 0 0.5. And then that value is going to be squared equals and then we have one half times the mass. Uh, it looks like the mass of the cart is two kilograms. So we're gonna go ahead and put a two there with a velocity of three at the top, three squared plus MGH, that same mass of two, G is always 9.8. And we are looking for H, so we do not have an H value. All right, so we have all of our values plugged in there. So we can go ahead and take one half times 200 times 0.5 squared, that comes out to 25. And then we have one half times two, which is one times three squared, which is nine. So this comes out to nine. And the unit is joules. 
and then plus two times 9.8, which is 19.6, which will give us our number or coefficient in front of H. And then we go ahead and finish off by doing two final steps, which are multiplying, excuse me, subtracting nine from both sides, which gives us 16 equals 19.6 times H. Divide both sides by 19.6, and then we have our final value for height, which equals 0 0.82 meters. So again, the process is um, asking yourself a series of simple questions to see what types of energy you have at the beginning or end. And what you wanna do is go ahead and draw out those bar graphs, the system, and the second set of bar graphs for the second position. Um, and then from there, set up your formula with what types of energy you have before and after, um, basically using the idea of conservation of energy, that the amount of energy within the system is conserved, so that total amount um, so that total amount of energy is constant. And then from there, you're gonna take those types of energy, expand it into the different formulas. And then once they're in their formula form, then you're gonna place numbers in there until you have every value you need besides the one that you're looking for. Finish off by doing a little bit of algebra and then go ahead and head towards that final solution. For us, that was the final height of 0 0.82 meters. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up a bar graph and solving for a series of calculations to find a final height. Thank you for watching and listening.